Hi there, I'm Gareth Jones. I'm with Airflow Fishing Products, and I'm here with the guys at Avid Max to tell you a little bit more about our fishing lines. So Airflow is a, a really well-known product in Europe, but probably a little lesser known in the US. Um, we, we're really well known for our products being made of polyurethane. Uh, it's a plastic that doesn't uh, involve any solvents, and as a result, our products last a heck of a long time. Uh, another thing you'll, you'll probably hear about Airflow is our lines are on a low stretch core. Uh, all of our lines are built on a 6% low stretch core, which gives you a real positive feel when you cast, Real, real positive feel when you set the hook uh, and also helps with take detection on a sinker line. So airflow is a little different to other fly lines out there. For a start we don't use PVC as a, as a fly line coating. All our lines are made with polyurethane. Um, another thing we do is we make our lines on low stretch cores. Some big benefits there for the consumer. Uh, you, you get a lot of contact with the fish, you get much better contact with the cast, uh, and a far more energy efficient product as a result. So we use polyurethane for our coatings. Big positives of that. They don't get affected by sunscreen, don't get affected by DEET, um, and don't get affected by gasoline. So all those things you find on a fishing trip that could, could actually damage your line, you'll find that they don't affect Airflow products. Airflow as a brand has been responsible for a lot of firsts in the industry. Um, a lot of people don't actually know, but we invented the welded loop we invented low stretch cores, we invented density compensation, and we were the first company out there with a, with a textured line. We had a ridge profile line, uh, was the industry's first line with a, with a ridge coating. Uh, we've, we've improved that more recently and I'd, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that shortly. Okay, so Airflow is really well known in Europe where um, a brand that's been around a long time, let's say 30, I've been with the company for over 30 years, company started in 84, um, and it was started by a guy called Paul Burgess. Paul was a mad scientist. Um, Paul had an idea of a, a different way to make flower lines and really followed the principle of extrusion, which is very similar to the way they make uh, electrical cables, of all things. Uh, but by a combination of uh, extrusion pressures and, extru and, and speeds of haul off, Paul was able to create a, a tapered product with uh, that sort of mechanism. Okay, so our lines are made on low stretch cores, but what does that actually mean when you're fishing? Well, a big part of low stretch cores is the, the immediacy of lift off. When you go to lift the line off the water, when you go to set the hook, when your indicator goes down at distance, that ability to, to, to lift off in a much cleaner, crisper, crisper action, if the line stretches 20% like a standard line, then it doesn't move as quickly. You don't set the hook, you don't, you don't get that fish. When a line only stretches 6%, then you get that hook set, uh, even at extreme distances. As a brand, when we, we sort of re-established, we, we looked at the fly line market and we, we felt there were just too many variants out there in the fly line, you know, too many opportunities for people to go, I don't know which line to choose. So we took a refresh and, and took a, a new look at it. And what we said was, look, there needs to be three tapers and a trout line. There needs to be a universal taper, there needs to be a power taper, and needs to be a tactical taper. And where they sit are like this. So the universal tapers, you're all round there. If you're gonna do some dry fly action and you could be setting up a nymph or even some small streamers in the afternoon, then that's, that line is the perfect all round there. On the AFDM chart, it's about a 5.5. So it's half a line size heavy. So it'll load really well for you. And it's really good in that sort of 30 to 60 feet range, sort of true trout fishing range. Um, then you've got the power taper, which is a much more aggressive line. Uh, it's only slightly shorter in taper length, but there's a lot more weight at the, at the front end of it. Um, it's a line for, if you can't generate line speed, you can generate um, load on the rod with the extra mass. It's a, let's say it's a 5.9. Um, and also it'll turn over much bigger flies. It's got quite a large tip. So if you've got a load of junk on the end, you've got an indicator, a couple of nymphs, load of tungsten, this thing will power it over. So that's the power taper. And then at the far end of the scale, we've got a what we call a tactical taper, and that's a true to line weight, much different taper profile, much longer front taper, much more delicate, 
and a line that will lose energy and just transfer enough to just delicately land sort of small dry fly. So they're the three tapers and that's the, the format we've taken for our line design. Uh, we've sort of imparted the same thing into the salt. So you've got a universal taper, power, tactical. Tactical's the guy for the real calm days or casters who can aerialize a lot of line, generate a lot of line speed. Again, that's true to line weight. Then when you get to the universal, half a line size heavier, great line for loading quickly. You know, when you sat there waiting for that shot, that first 10 feet of line outside the tip ring is critical. And we've put a little bit of extra weight in that, that section so it really loads and gets you moving on fish quickly. Power tapers for the days when you probably shouldn't really go fishing. You know, it's like the wind's up, you got it in your face and you're not going to be making sort of 70, 80 feet casts. You're going to be fishing at 30, 30 to 40 feet and you need to power it in. Uh, and that's where the power taper comes into the into the four. So they, the, they, that's the format we followed and that's kind of what we're, we're going to present going forwards. Okay, so another product Airflow is really well known for is our poll leaders. And, and what are they? Okay, so in an ideal world, a fly line would be tapered all the way down to tip a diameter, but that's just not going to happen. So what we've done historically is we've always used tapered mono and tapered mono is the right concept. It's the right idea taken from tip diameter, fly line down to tip a diameter. But there's a problem and the problem exists because monofilament in the same diameter as the fly line tip, as in the butt section of the mono leader is stiff and that loses the casting, the shape of the casting loop. So that nice loop that you've created in, in the fly line, that super supple fly line, just doesn't transmit all the way through because you get to a stiff butt section and it'll generally sort of springboard over. It won't, it won't keep that same shape, it'll just kind of kick, kick the flies over. Whereas the poly leaders are built around the same tech as fly lines. Effectively, they're, they're butt sections of a leader and they come in sort of five, eight, 10 feet lengths and what you do is they, you add a tippet onto them. Now they're all looped to the back end, so they go straight into our loop to loop system, so super neat. But what they've got is they've got the same flex as the fly line. So you continue that cast in loop all the way through to tippet. Uh, far more energy efficient, far more durable. Um, they last way longer than a, than a mono leader. I'll, I'll show you something. I'll take one out of the packet here. Uh, this is a little test I do just to show people stuff. This thing, um, yeah, this will blow, blow people's mind when you see this for the first time. Okay, so i just got a poly leader of the packet and I, uh, I'll unwrap it so you can see what I've got here. Okay, so as you can see immediately, there's less memory in it. It comes out, it's really supple. Give it a little stretch and you're ready to go. Now, I'll do this, I'll just rip it up. Give it a good old strinkle up, give it a stretch out, and we're back away to go. You try and do that with a monofilament leader, it isn't gonna happen, you're gonna put it straight in the junk. So the durability of poly leaders is, is exceptional. Uh, poly leaders also come in a variety of densities. So what that allows you to do is to change on the water very quickly from dry fly action with a floating poly leader. If you wanna, without taking another fly line, another reel, you can quickly put a, an eight foot sort of super fast sink pole leader into the system and you're down there fishing your streamers. So it's a very versatile system. They're a little bit more expensive than mono leaders, but they're gonna last, you know, you'll get a season out of these things if you take care of them. So at Airflow, our tech is a little different. Um, we don't make our lines from PVC, we make our lines out of polyurethane. Polyurethane is a uh, far more stable plastic. It doesn't require any solvents. So the line whilst being um, without any solvents in it means that it's not going to be affected by sunscreen, so it will be affected by DEET. Uh, it's not going to be affected by gasoline and its durability is going to be far longer. Uh, the way I always to sort of describe it is a, um, a PU coating is a very permanent thing, whereas a solvent based plastic will be more like a paint. And when you paint things, you know, over time, that paint will be sort of, you know, exposed to the sun. And as the sun draws out those, those solvents, then the, the paint doesn't stretch. And if the paint doesn't stretch, it cracks on your window as it expands. And, and that's exactly what happens with, um, with our competitors' lines, whereas the PU lines will be 
very, very, uh, very much in force way down the line. So a little bit more on the, the, the flower line design and why we design them in a certain way. And I mentioned earlier about uh, different line weights and what that means is that let's take our tactical, a true five weight, our universal are 5.5 and our power taper are almost a six weight. It's a 5.9 on the fractional AFTM chart. So two things that load a fly rod. One is the fly line's weight but more importantly is your ability to generate line speed. So if you're able to generate a lot of line speed, you can load the rod with a lower weight. If you aren't able to generate line speed, if you're newer to the sport and you're just developing your casting stroke, then you need to make up for that lower line speed with a higher line weight. So whilst we got the universal, that's kind of our go-to line. If you're new and you want to get like that load in your rod really working well, then if you haven't got line speed, go for the power taper. If you've got great line speed and you know what you're doing, and you can generate a lot of speed with that hole, then you can go down to the tactical taper. And that's why we really recommend the universal kind of, because it's the best all rounder. But if you know where you are on that scale, then you know pick the line that's best for you. There is, no, there, there is really no best line. It's whatever one suits you. Okay, so we've got this concept of universal tactical power. But within that, we offer it in two versions. We've got a Superflow, which is a $100 product, and that's unridged, that's a smooth surface. And then if you wanna go for the ridged version with the, with the new uh, Ridge 2.0 profile on it, that's 129 bucks. So there's benefits to both. So if you're looking for a more traditional type line without the texture, then the Superflow really fills the bill. Uh, it's got all the benefits of low diameter running line. It's got the whole zone. It's got the really good water repulsion system, high buoyancy, all the usual things you expect from a premium line. Then if you wanna go for the, for, the, for the Ridge 2.0, what you've got is a line that will move through the guides faster, will certainly tangle less in the salt water and fresh, but obviously it's really important when you hooked, hooked it with GT or something significant and you don't wanna get that bust off. Um, but it is all about line speed and, and the ability to generate it far easier. So in the UK, a lot of our fishing styles are based around still water. A lot of guys will go fishing, they'll have 10, maybe 20 different fly lines in, the, in, the, in their quiver. Um, and it's taken us a little while to get our, our act together for the US market where that still water scene, A, isn't as big, and a lot of your fishing is, is dialed in towards the, the river scene. So a lot of the fly line designs that we were originally coming out with didn't really suit the market. So it's been a complete rethink on our behalf. Uh, literally, we went and bought everybody's premium rod. We went and bought all our competitors' lines. <laughs> we, won't, we won't lie, we, we checked out what other people were doing. We saw what was good and we saw what was bad. So, you know, we, and what we felt was that there were certain um, combinations we could put together that really sang with certain rods. And that was how we were trying to get to you know, where, where we got a product that really suits the market going forwards. Well guys, thanks for listening to my fly line ramblings. Um, we're super excited to see Airflow with Avid Max. Uh, thank you for your time, have a great day.